Hello everyone, it's Gigabeef here and we're back to ask another question. Have you ever wondered what the fastest possible round is in Escape from Tarkov? Well I did and today we're going to find out and of course find out a few interesting things along the way. So stick around and let's get going. So why do we care about bullet velocity in the first place? Well, this might seem like a really simple question, but effectively, if we think about two scenarios, the first one where we have an infinite speed bullet, this is basically how hit scan used to work in a lot of old games, where effectively, when you point at something and you press the button, there's a line that's just drawn from your barrel straight to the target, and if you hit, you hit, and if you don't, you don't. And in that case, clearly, there's no ballistics, there's no trajectories, there's no leading, anything like that. So it does make it actually easier to hit targets. Now, the other scenario, imagine something like a bow and arrow, anyone who's been playing Valheim recently will see this. In order to hit your target, you have to lead quite significantly. You also have to point up quite a lot because there's a lot of drop on an arrow. It's a very, very slow projectile. And so you can't just aim straight at your target. You have to either lead in front if they're moving. You have to aim high because of gravity. So between those two scenarios, it's clearly advantageous in an FPS game where you're shooting, where there's a ballistics model in the physics engine like there is in Escape from Tarkov and a few other games, especially the ones that are more milsimmy, where you're going to have a faster round, which means that you can more accurately place your shots because there's less guesswork in terms of leading and in terms of either using a zeroing system or moving the, the reticle above your target in the first place. The quest Shooter Born in Heaven is probably the one that most people think about when they think of bullet velocities. And there's a lot of people who choose rounds with a very high speed on them to try to complete this quest because you're trying to get headshots over 100 meters, which means that you have to be a certain distance away and you want to give yourself some leeway so you don't end up getting a 95 meter headshot or something, for example. So the faster the round speed that you have, the greater chance you are of actually being able to hit somebody accurately because there's less lag time between you pressing the trigger and then potentially moving out of the way. The other advantage to this is it flattens out all of the ballistic trajectory arcs. So over a longer distance, you hardly have to make any adjustments if you're using a higher speed round, which again is, is clearly advantageous because you don't have to interact with the zeroing system as much, you don't have to do as much guesswork. So this can be really useful for doing Shooter Born in Heaven when you're trying to precisely aim at somebody's head. And with all of the other stuff going on, you want to try and minimise any of these extra irregularities that you have to deal with, if at all possible. Okay, so what actually makes a bullet go fast? We're going to be using really high-tech MS Paint here, which is one of my favourites for demonstrating things. So ultimately, we've got the bullet here, which comprises of the casing, uh, which is full of propellant, and you have the piece of metal, which is going to fly out once this ignites. And so in here, you have some kind of explosive, which is going to force the round out. Then secondly, you have the barrel, which the round will actually travel through in the first place. So our little round that we were talking about is going to start down here somewhere, and the piece of metal is going to fly out the end over here. And what's going to happen is when the propellant ignites, the gas pushes our metal piece along this barrel and so this is the reason why in Tarkov a longer barrel means that you have a higher velocity because this is broadly speaking how it works in the real world the longer that you give the gas to push the round the faster it will go and most of this impact happens in the first section it kind of drops off over time right so if you're looking at like a chart where it's like impact versus uh, distance along the barrel this this like sort of drops off over time so most of the impact you have is in this first section so as you make the barrel longer it's not like you get double the speed for doubling the length or anything but you do get a speed advantage for increasing the length of this barrel which is reflected in the game's mechanics itself Okay, so you probably guessed it, we're back on the wiki, and we're looking at the ammunitions page. Now, Escape from Tarkov has a lot of different ammo. You can see there's pistol cartridges, and there's five different types going from 7.62 Tokarev all the way through to ACP. We have the PDW cartridges, rifle cartridges, shotgun, grenade launcher, etc. So there's a whole host of stuff, and we're going to only look at a few because... Really, there's only so many that are real contenders in terms of ones that might actually have high velocity because something like a pistol round is never really going to be that fast. So if we quickly skip to 9 by 19 first, just as a good example, this is primarily a pistol cartridge. We know that we've got 7N31, which is the relatively new round and is kind of experimental. Um, it's quite controversial because I don't think it would actually work in a lot of guns that it works in Escape from Tarkov due to the, the gas pressure that we were talking about in the propellant a second ago. But in the wiki, you can actually sort these by projectile speed. And you have to be in this specific page in order to do this. So what you can see here is that at the top, you've got 
9 by 19 7 and 31 with a 560 meters per second speed and then interestingly the second fastest is pst gzh which is 457 and then you have luger ap63 rip screen tracer etc coming down here so 7 and 31 is by far the fastest at 560 now issue is is that this is still a 9 mil caliber which means it's never going to be that quick so what we really want to look at is the rifle calibers so the first one we're going to look at is 545 which is the modern ak's if we sort this by projectile speed we get a Golnik at the top, which is not really surprising, and BP as the second. So 905 is pretty good. 905 is very, very fast for a round. So this is a good contender. Next up, we're going to look at 556 NATO, the classic, if we sort these by projectile speed. Interestingly, and this is perfectly timed for this guide, is that M905 is very, very quick, as you can see, with 1013 projectile speed, kind of as the bullet on its own, shortly followed by 55 FMJ, 55 HP, and M855A1, which interestingly is now number five in the list. But this has been surpassed by SSA AP at 1050. So this is extremely extremely fast and the 556 caliber effectively gets its speed from a combination of high energy within the propellant and not too high a weight within the actual round itself along with some aerodynamic effects too so if we have a look at some bigger rounds 762 by 39 and sort these by projectile speed so we have the new round here and we have hp and bp so the new round is 875 which is very very quick actually for a round of this type bp was 730 previously so we are talking about 300 meters per second less than the equivalent ap round for 556 and that's because this round is just simply bigger this is a similar effect that we're going to see with a lot of these so 762 51 NATO. The fastest round for this is M993, which is 910, which again is incredibly quick, but not quite as fast as the smaller caliber rifle rounds. Uh, 762-54R, which again is a big, big bullet, um, with a 7-in-1 sniper cartridge being the fastest jointly with SMB at 875. And then the new 338 Lapua Magnum in for the sword, which has the fastest projectile speed in the FMJs, which is 900. So none of these actually come close to what we have in, within 5.56. And so this is going to be our ammo of choice. M905 used to be it, and now it is SSA AP. Right, now that we've chosen the ammo, we need to have a look at the guns to figure out which one is going to have the fastest round speed because there are modifiers in Tarkov depending on the length of barrels and a few other mods, especially muzzles. And so let's have a look at the weapons themselves. So within here, we've just done a linked search for SSA AP. So really, we're just looking at anything that runs 556. We have a couple of different choices. We have the ADAR and the Lone Star, and we have the AK-101 and 102, the M4, the DT-MDR, and the HK-416. Now what we want to do first off is have a look and see what the default speeds are for these various weapons. Now this is made slightly more complicated by the fact that different guns have different rounds as their default round. And as we've seen, the different rounds have different speeds. And so that's going to have an impact straight away. So that something like the ADAR, for example, uses M855 as its default round, whereas AK-101 uses 55 FMJ. And so you automatically get something different in the stats if you're looking at something without any rounds in. This is complicated even further by the fact that if a gun has a round inside already in the chamber, so this has got M856 in, this speed here, this muzzle velocity here, will reference this round. So this has got 830, let's see if we can find one without anything yet. So this has got nothing in the chamber and this is at 876. This is actually slightly different to the one that we saw before. So if we go and have a look through, the best way is probably to just have a look at the trader offers because then you definitely don't get anything in the chamber. So the ADAR's got 876, the Lone Star here has got uh, 874, and the AK-101 and 102, interestingly, are at 979, which is very, very quick. And then you've got the Colt M4, which is 866, the DT-MDR, which is 880, and the HK-416, which is 852. But as we said, that's not really a fair comparison. And what you really want to do is you want to have the same round in each weapon so that you're calculating off the same base. So what we've got here is a HK416, a 101, a TX15 DML, and an M4, which have all got the same round inside, which I've put in an M995 for the purposes of this example. Now, what is quite interesting about this, if we go into the edit preset for one of these guns, one thing that you can't do in the preset menu is actually insert a round into the gun itself. So we have to basically add one before and then start removing our bits and pieces to get back to the base. Because if you just take your preset and you say new preset, that'll remove the round from the chamber and then you won't be able to compare. So here we can see that the M995 inside an HK416 is 1013 meters per second, which shouldn't really be a big surprise to us because that is actually the round speed on M995 itself. 
What is surprising is if you look at the AK-101 and we go to uh, edit the preset on this thing, what we do is we take off the various parts, we strip it back as far as we can go, and clearly these don't go as far back as the other more modular weapons. And so here we've got an M95 in there, and this actually gives us a round speed of 1031. Now what does this mean? What does this tell us? Well this tells us that the AK-101 and the AK-102 actually have an inbuilt round speed multiplier in them, as if you were using a longer barrel on another weapon, which we'll look at in a moment. But you can see inside muzzle velocity here, there's a little, little blue bar, which actually implies that within the weapon itself, there is this bonus multiplier in there. And so what we do is we say we've got 1031, and we divide that by the speed of an M995, which is 1013, and that gets us to 1.75. So we know that the AK-101 and 102 have a 1.75% bonus to uh, round speed, so whatever round you put in there, it's actually going to travel faster when it's fired out of this weapon. Now the reason why this matters, and the reason why this is important, is if we look at something like the M4, and basically everything that takes M4 barrels and M4 mods kind of works in exactly the same way, which is the reason why we can rule most of them out. So if we again strip this right back to basics, and now we're starting just with the lower receiver, we're back to 1013. Now what we want to do is we want to be able to add a receiver, it doesn't matter which one we use, we'll just put any on for the time being, and then this allows us to add a barrel. Now Within the barrels, you clearly get a choice of lots of different lengths. And as we said, the longer the barrel, the higher the speed of the round should be when it comes out the other end. So if we use a very short barrel like the 260, you can see that it takes us from 1013 down to 165. But what's really fascinating about the M4, which means that it can't ever be the fastest round weapon in the game, is if you pick the 20 inch barrel, which is the longest, you actually still lose muzzle velocity. And in this case, we lose 31. And that's because if we go to find parts and have a look at the barrel itself, that's because this barrel actually loses you 3.1% muzzle velocity. And that's the best that you can do for the M4. So the other places where you get muzzle velocity are within the suppressors and compensators. The best one, uh, I've had a look through the different combinations, and the best one that you can do is the blackout and suppressor. So as you go find parts for this, we can see that the blackout itself has got a muzzle velocity of plus 1%, and the sound suppressor is 0.75. But if we add all these things up with the barrel, this ultimately means that we're losing 1.35% of round velocity when we use the M4, even if we put all the attachments on that make it as fast as we can. So the M4 and the ADAR and the TX-15, they all use the same interchangeable barrels and they all have the same muzzles. And so you're never going to get those up to the top level. So our next part of call, we might ask ourselves, well, what about the difference between the HK416 and the AK-101. Well, the AK-101 does seem to be quite a clearly good contender for this, because if we have a look at the preset here, and what I've done is I've added the CNC Warrior AK muzzle device, because then this allows us to add the blackout and the AAC suppressor as well on top. This actually takes us to 1048 using M995. And so we're using the inbuilt advantage the AK-101 and 102 already have when it comes to round velocity, and then we're adding another 1.75% on the top here to get to 1048 from the default on M995. So this seems pretty, pretty good. However, when we look at the HK-416 and we go to edit this preset, what we're going to do here is use exactly the same setup as the M4, except we're using the 20 inch barrel for the 416. And if we go and have a look at the statistics for this particular piece, this is where it makes all the difference. The muzzle velocity on the 4 and 6 20 inch barrel is actually plus 3. And so this is a huge difference between the M4 and the HK416, which means that when we apply that with the best in slot muzzle brake and compensator, this takes M995 to 1061. And this is because when you add all the mods together, you're getting 4.75% increased round speed. So the HK416 is the fastest platform for firing rounds out of. And if we instead switch over to one of these new rounds, the SSA APs, that will get us to 1099 meters per second, which is in fact the fastest that you can get in the game. So ultimately, what are you going to use? I mean, practically speaking, you just have to ask yourself, does it make much of a difference between going from M995 with 999 meters per second in a Lone Star or an M4 or something equivalent, or 1099 meters per second with the HK? We're talking about 100 meters per second, which at that speed, it probably doesn't make an enormous difference. If you want to get the best you can in a cheap way, the AK-101 is actually a really good choice because even without any mods whatsoever, it's got a 974 meters per second round velocity, which if you add M995 into it, it gets to 1031. 
To get the same with anything else, the HK416, you absolutely have to use the 20 inch barrel because the other barrels lose round velocity in the same way as the M4 does. So the AK101 is actually quite good as like a budget sniper if you want really, really fast rounds and you're using even something like down to M855A1 because that will still get you 962 meters per second versus something like the TX where if we put the round into here we can see that that gets to 932 so it's a reasonable difference given that the Lone Star is actually modded out for round velocity and the AK-101 I've actually taken the suppressor and compensator off if you add that back on that gets you to 990 and that's at base so if we add M855A1 back into here we're getting to 978 and then you add the 995 back in and you get to 1048 so the ak-101 is very effective for getting good round speeds out of a cheap and budget weapon right where are we this is the swamp what i was thinking about was trying to cut somebody off over on this side but i'm not sure if this is going to be sensible I'm actually going to set this to uh, 100, 100 meters zeroing. Anyone down here? The scope's nice, isn't it? The VD. It is a nice one. Or like, well, field, field of view, I mean. Ah. Let's go. Like, you're always at risk any time in the FT when you're moving. You know, when you're repositioning from one place to another. Because somebody could just be like sat in a bush like this. Oh. Whoops. There's one. Oh, there we go. That's all I needed. Is he dead? He's dead, right? Oh, no, he's not. Is he dead now? He's still not dead. Am I overshooting him or something? How is he not dead? Holy hell. What? Come on, reload the gun. How on earth is this guy not dead? For real. At least you only needed one more? Yeah, I know. Rock not rendering? Maybe. That's pretty nuts, right? <laughs> Who's that firing over there? So there's someone over there, I think. Hmm. There's someone firing from, like, over here. What's your sighting? Who was on 100 before? And then I changed it down to 50 so that I could, like, shoot over. Whoops. Oh, hey! How could, how could it not have happened that way the first time? I think he was shooting at this guy. Oh, that's the one over here. They were running. Oh, sweet! All right. Okay, so we want to go and find that dude. Oh, they're doing that cash. Right, let's go to Scav Island and have a look at this guy. But I should actually be paying attention here. Okay, so what's this dude got? I 
Don't hear any shots. Don't see anyone. Okay, I think we're good. Right, let's go. Let's go. I'm fed up with messing around. Hey, you rude boy. There you are. Wait, what? Oh no, extracts road to customs. I'm actually the worst at this. I'm actually genuinely the worst at this. <gasps> that is one thing that I'm always, always, always terrible at. No way. No way. I always forget where I spawn. It's so bad. It's so bad. The run begins. Oh, here. Oh, crap. Sniper scav is still up. I ran right next to him before and I didn't think he was uh I didn't think he was I didn't think he was live still. Oops, that was over his head. There we go. Finally. Yes, yeah, so we can either go through power or we can go at the top. I feel like maybe we go through power. It's riskier. And I think there's almost certainly scavs here. This is all just like, this isn't even player scavs, this is real scavs. Well Alright, let's leave through the back. Why's my oh oh dear oh no that's bad okay that is really bad actually someone said check water and stuff and then I forgot <gasps> are we gonna make it this is a bad time it's just over there you know what we're gonna do though etg let's go golden balm oh that's a good idea right in we go don't check just keep moving Oh no. No, no, no. <laughs> that would have been, that would have been an absolute shocker. Can you imagine? Yeah, I'm not sure. Oh, look at that XP though, 10k. A lot of scavs, these two boys. Well, we got a headshot on both of them actually. We got a shooter board in heaven on both of these dudes. Oh yeah, of course, because the second one was in the, uh, in the thing. Nice easy raid. <laughs> No problems at all, you know, it's no big deal. 10,000 XP, it's fine, you know. <laughs> exhaustion, 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 and PS. Thank God he had 545 PS. So I hope you enjoyed today's video as much as I did researching it. If you learned something, as always, if you want to support the channel, consider dropping a like and a sub or a comment as it helps with visibility on YouTube for those who haven't found me yet. To see when I'm streaming, you can follow me on Twitter and Twitch, where I'm currently live twice a week, once on Friday at 9pm UK time for the Scav Talk podcast, which you can check out the link for in the description below, and a regular Tarkov stream on Saturday at 2pm UK time. And with all that said, I'll see you next time, and as always, have fun in your raids.